Hey guys, Crazy Dave here. So, Little Coffee Bean got herself a Seer Daddy, some Smoke Daddy. And we're gonna put it in her grill. And we're gonna test this thing out to see what it's all about. And we're gonna review this thing and let you know what we think of the Seer Daddy. Stay tuned. So here's what it looks like installed. Got to take out the drip pan as well as the heat deflector. Then you're going to install the flavor bars. You're going to put your grate back together. Make sure this is in the center of the grill. And according to the Smoke Daddy instruction, we're going to set the grill on high. So stay tuned as we fire this up. Okay, guys, so as we're waiting for a little coffee beans Traeger with the Seer Daddy to fire up. I wanted to show you what I got over here in the Marinade Express. We've got some chicken breast, some chicken legs, some thighs, and all that good stuff. And what I did is I did a recipe, which I'm gonna share to you guys. Very quick and very simple. So guys, what's the marinade? Quite simple, actually. I picked up both of these items from Costco. The French Red Hot Seasoning and the Grill Mates Brown Sugar Bourbon. Now, on the back here, I'm not sure if you can see this thing, or the marinade instructions. Quite simple, actually. Let me see if I can stop the shakiness of the camera here. Here we go. So it says, mix three tablespoons of brown sugar, uh, and some quarter cup of oil, two tablespoons of white vinegar and water, and, and go ahead and marinate it. So I did that, and I multiplied it by the number of times that I actually needed to increase that. And I stuck it in my marinade express. But at the same time, I also added about three tablespoons of the French Red Hot. And honestly, it really did a good job. So guys, this is the inside of my fridge here. And there's a whole bunch of chicken over here. It's all marinated and everything. And that went in the Marinade Express earlier. And now it's time to barbecue. Okay guys, so a little coffee bean grill is all fired up. Sorry about the noise there, that's the air conditioner. And you can see there's a very, very little smoke coming out of the smokestack at the top there. But look at this down here at the bottom. There is like little to no smoke at all. And we're gonna go over here by create a little coffee bean grill here, and it's on. Okay guys, so on the grill is some chicken. We're gonna go ahead and open it up. And look at that. That's beautiful. We got some legs in the back here, we got some thighs on that thing, and that thing is just going like a real barbecue. So we're gonna close this back up and let this baby flame boil. So guys, I had to actually turn this thing down from high to about 250 because I know it's on high. It was actually doing exactly what it's supposed to do here. And it seems like that's just too high to cook chicken. So remember, it's basically emulating your old style of propane grill. So if you want to cook on high to sear, yes, of course, do that. But I would also recommend, you know, adjust your temperature accordingly, depending on the style of meat you're using. So in this case, I'm cooking chicken, so I don't want the skin to burn. I want the chicken to cook. So I'm going to turn this thing back down again and let it just kind of you know, slowly cook. But so far, the Steer Daddy is doing an amazing job. Okay guys, so what did I decide to do? I decided to use my Traeger with the regular setup, uh, set for about 270. Kind of cooking these chicken a little bit, nice and slow, kind of cooking the inside of the meat. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take him over to a little coffee bean grill that has the Steer Daddy in it to finish it off. And I'm thinking that that might answer a lot of people's problems in that they think the chicken comes off rubbery. Well, by doing it over here on the regular Traeger and then finishing it off on the Steer Daddy, I think that's going to give you the crispy chicken that everyone misses. Hey guys, so here's a suggestion for you. See, I've got that second rack in here 
called the half rack or the back rack on the Traeger. Um, I'm going to recommend from here that if you're actually going to be searing or cooking high, you might want to take that out. But on the same side, you could leave it in. Just understand though that you're going to need some long tongs to get to the back. Because what I ended up doing is if things were cooking a little too fast, I kind of threw them on the top and kind of let it melt it out a little bit. So it's really up to you, but I'm going to have to recommend that if you are cooking a lot of food, then yeah, definitely remove that back wrap. Check that out. Okay guys, I know you probably can't see much because of it so being so dark, but I wanted to show you the way that. Isn't that cool? Look at that flame. love those embers coming up like a charcoal effect on that chicken now of course you can't really see it but if I turn the flashlight on man you'll see some really super nice looking chicken over here at Sear Daddy just cooking away and as I mentioned earlier about that top rack as you can see I'm using it to kind of chill a little bit because there's some tenderloin right there in the back that are almost done cooking but I don't want them well done I just kind of want them a little warmed up here with the chicken breast. Man, did that look okay, amazing. Here's that chicken breast that I just pulled off the Sear Daddy. Look at these beautiful grill marks. I mean, look at that. That is amazing. That is like a charboiled look at that. Man. Now that is some amazing, amazing product right there. And let's turn these over. Look at this. Look at that, that grill mark. Look at that. I mean, we're turning these things over. And on both sides, that is some amazing grill marks right there. That's the Sear Daddy for you. So I ask you this question, what are you waiting for? And this is done on the Traeger using the Sear Daddy from Smoke Daddy. Okay guys, so the Sear Daddy is now done cooled off. And some of you guys were commenting when I was doing my pre-reviews how much grease is going to get onto the hot pot well here we go we're going to take this apart we're going to pull out the grill or the grate set that off to the side and now we're going to actually lift up the sear daddy and see how bad it is under hey guys here. a little coffee bean here as you can see the se the sear daddy is completely filthy and dirty but inside the trigger it's pretty clean to really be honest like inside, it's like nothing. I'm actually pretty surprised about it. And there you go. It's really not that bad. I mean, what do I got? One little rock here that that might have fell out from the Sear Daddy. So, but I'm really actually surprised that you see there is no too little grease down here at the bottom. And remember, this thing doesn't have a drip tray. All that grease, when you're cooking, is falling onto those flavor bars and being cooked away by the high heat and those flames hitting directly into the sear daddy. I'm telling you guys, this is amazing. So guys, as you see, I just demonstrated to you what I think of the sear daddy. And here's my opinion on it. It's a great product, not that expensive, it works as advertised. Um, my only concern is in the instructions, it tells you to set it to high. And I agree with you, yeah, if you want to sear and you want to quickly sear that meat, yeah, true, use high. But I found that if I left the grill between 225, 270 ish, give or take, I actually was able to cook better. And think about it, it this is substituting what you would normally use in a propane grill, okay? And we don't always cook on high in a propane grill. You cook on a medium or medium low because you kind of want the food to chill out and cook nice and slow. Because fast isn't always good. So I'm gonna tell you, if you get one, you have to kind of learn it and play with it, just like you did on your regular pellet grill. You learn it, play it, find out what temperature works, what temperature doesn't work, and kind of go from there, okay? So I'm gonna tell you, don't always use high. Play with it. Find out what works best for you. On some people, high is good. On some meat, high is awesome. 
on other me medium and sometimes even low. Now I mean, I'm going to try to see if I can possibly use it to maybe smoke around with it. We'll see. Who knows? But stay tuned and I'm going to keep talking about this product until everybody has it. Crazy Dave here and I'm out.